we should make them work better. And that's why today I'm pledging to cut the deficit we inherited by half by the end of my first term in office. The way Bush has done it over the last eight years is to take out a credit card from the Bank of China in the name of our children, driving up our national debt from $5 trillion for the first 42 presidents. Number 43 added $4 trillion by his lonesome so that we now have over $9 trillion of debt that, that we are going to have to pay back. 30,000... You niggas know my pyroclastic flow. You niggas know my power class flow, flow, flow. You niggas know my power class flow. It's R A W, R A W. You're looking at the Grand Wizard, Warlord, vocal cords so vicious. And I don't have to show riches to pull up, pull off with some bad bitches. And it ain't about chivalry, it's about dope lyrics and delivery. It's about my persona Ain't nothing like a man that can do what he wanna Ain't nothing like a man that you knew on the corner See him come up and fuck up the owner See him throw up Westside California Nigga, I'm hot as Phoenix, Arizona I'm Utah, I got multiple bitches It's a new law, keep a hold of your riches Dumb nigga, don't spin it As soon as you get it And recognize I'm a captain, you a lieutenant I can say what I wanna say, ain't nothing to it. Gangsta rap made me do it. Made me do it. If I call you a nigga, ain't nothing to it. Gangsta rap made me do it. I can act like an animal, ain't nothing to it. Gangsta rap made me do it. Made me do it. If I eat you like a cannibal, ain't nothing to it. Gangsta rap made me do it. I'm raw as a dirty needle, choke an eagle, just to feed all my people. Lyrically, I'm so lethal Plant thoughts in they mind just to defeat you Ice Cube is a saga Y'all spit saliva and I spit lava I got the fearless flow Don't get near this hoe If you scared to go I keep it gangster And why should I change that? Fuck you old motherfuckers trying to change say rap what, Say what? But ain't you the same cat That sat back when they brought cocaine say back? What, say what? I'm trying to get me a Maybach How you motherfuckers gonna tell me don't say that? You the ones that we learned it from I heard nigga back in 1971 The theological idealism of the Masonic Temple Is to carry out the agenda of the ancient Egyptian text Meaning that when the Egyptian texts say that Queen Tia, mother of Anunnaki, and Anunnaki himself will be brought back to life in the future to rule over mankind, the Masonic Temple are obligated by their theological idealism to make sure that these and many other Egyptian prophecies are carried out. So you think Obama is a clone of Akhenaten then? Let's get to that. Let's have a look at this. All right. Now, I've, I've established the idea that Akhenaten is the go-to guy for all the secret societies from Rosicrucians to Freemasonry. If you also understand that Akhenaten was uh, the, the carrier of all of this knowledge, the renegade, you would understand why they would bring him back out of all people. And like I say, the Hastings Institute even went forward and said this. Well, you know what? I, I put this picture Let's start with, with Michelle, since we have her. Let's look mm. at Akhenaten's mother, Queen T. Mm -hmm. Akhenaten's mother, Queen T, is, is a mystery as well. She was brought into the pharaonic uh, ship at the age of four and was uh, co-regent with her husband, Amenhotep III. The biggest statues of, of pharaohs are of Queen T and her husband, Amenhotep III. And they gave birth to Akhenaten. When you look at Queen T, I would imagine you would immediately see Michelle Obama. Now, what I did is I took Michelle Obama's high school photo and I cut it in half and I laid these two images side by side and you can't tell I split the photo. People are using my mixed image as an original image of Queen T because you can't even tell her face is there. If you got that picture of her high school photo and you were to crossfade these two images, you would clearly see that they are the same person. Hmm. 
you know, resemblance, we know resemblance occurs across culture, I mean, across time okay. periods. And I would give that to you. And I would think the same thing. Now, honestly, if you want to look at the next picture, Barack and Naughton, um, the when I put this artwork together, I really only put Barack, his Time magazine photo with Akhenaten. And I split again the faces in half. Now, I'll admit here live on television that we did not, I did not manipulate, squish, or do anything to make that face fit the other face. They just fit. I cut them straight in half and I put them together and they are an exact match. So now we have two faces of a single family of Egypt and a single family that is the first family. So you're looking at uh, Akhenaten split with Barack Obama and you're looking at Queen T split with Michelle Obama. And then <laughs> I learned, lo and behold, that Akhenaten had two favorite daughters. Uh -huh. And I said, nah, this can't be. So I dug out the images of Akhenaten's two daughters. And I'll tell you, Malaya and Sasha have very unique facial structures uh, compared to each other, whereas Sasha has kind of the pudgier cheeks and Malaya is a little skinnier. They are an exact match of Akhenaten's children. So now you have four faces right. that you're dealing with. Okay, so we're dealing with the fact that you can clone a mummy <laughs> that cloning has been going on since 1951. That if the secret societies in charge of our planet were going to bring back anyone in the world, it would be this man. And now we've got this mysterious man who we call Barack Obama, and I'd like to get into more of him a little bit later. Uh, of course, he's Barry Satoro, Barry Dunham. Nobody knows what his name is, and no I predict knows, that that is No well. one knows I, where he's born. No one knows <laughs> his real identity, right? Exactly. He was born on Krypton. Exactly, exactly. And, if, Mike and Michelle, if Michelle is a man, that's another question now that's been posed. Pharaohs were very manly, and Queen Hatshepsut was another one of these female pharaohs. Now remember, Queen T was a pharaoh. Uh, Queen Hatshepsut, who also has an amazing temple that no one can explain how it was created, uh, she would actually wear a beard so that she could stand up there as pharaoh. So these, these pharaonic women were very much into being manly. So I can understand when Joan Rivers comes out and says that Obama is our first gay president and that Michelle's actually a transvestite. <laughs> uh, but my theory has been running a whole lot longer and my evidence com continues to compound on itself instead of degrade. Right, but what is the reason for Akhenaten not being, people not being able to identify Akhenaten's body if he was a man or a woman? Well, this goes back to the ancient astronauts hypothesis and many people, when you, when you study, when you begin the study of ancient astronauts, you immediately come to Akhenaten. He's the first man, the king of, of the ancient astronauts because he was born with a cone head and he had this weird body that had big wide hips and they, they actually would say that he had Marfan syndrome because he's always depicted with a cone head and with this weirdly shaped pear body. Uh, but Akhenaten brought life to it, even depicting himself with his family and depicting himself as he naturally was, with a cone head and a big wide hips. <laughs> and the daughters as well, when you see their depictions, are uh, cone heads as well, with pointed Vulcan ears. Given this, uh, this ritual, this ritual of raising Akhenaten, what is your interpretation of the reasoning behind it? You know, okay. Obama hasn't it, proved to be, I mean, he may be the last president, we don't know yet, but he hasn't proved to be any kind of great leader uh, for, from any point of view. No one right. is, at this point, no one is really a big fan of his, it seems. So what, where is this ritual going? Right. Now, this is where it really gets curious. Uh, because, yes, I never expected much out of Barack Obama. And let's just state that they may never know that they were clones, right? And let's keep that clear as well, that a well, clone... If they listen about, to you, they might figure it out, but yeah. Right, right, right. I, I, keep, I keep imagining Malaya saying, why do I have to be a cone head? You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I think they must have seen my work. I'm pretty sure they must have seen my work. I've been spouting about this since they came to power, so uh, mm -hmm. I am pretty sure it's come across their desk. Uh, Barack Obama himself, now this is where it all came in, uh, to be very curious. Now, first of all, we live on a much stranger planet than you could possibly imagine. And the elite, the, these leaders, the powers that be, are 
way ahead of us in their, their technology and, and their understandings of the universe. Now, you can glean a lot of this off freemantv.com because I've been following the, the hidden agenda for quite some time, and it's, 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 uh, it's mind-boggling. So when Barack Obama came into power, I actually created my first artwork of Barack Anaton. Mm -hmm. And to me, this, like you were saying, was just a strange coincidence. It wasn't until I found five other faces and one single family that I said, okay, this is too much. Because this just can't happen. I'm sorry, that much is not coincidence. If you can get five faces from one single family together and make them a, another single family, if you can do this with any other family in the world, I'll eat my hat. But <laughs> you're talking five faces, all right? So you, that's the big key here. Where's the any, fifth, any where's grade the fifth school, face? What's There's that? four faces. Who's the fifth face? Ah, yes. We are missing one, aren't we? And then we'll get to Barack. Uh, there was one more face. You see... M Barack Obama would not be married to his wife of ancient lore. He'd be married to his mother. Right. Queen T was his mom. Nefertiti was his famous wife. Oh, Beyonce. Uh, the beauty of Nefertiti. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Beyonce. And there has always been that rumor about Obama and Beyonce when they were in, was it France or Paris together? That is absolutely correct. And that came out right after I announced the Nefertiti-Beyonce connection. Hmm after right i was before that saying no if this if this be true then the true wife of barack would be beyonce right. and of course at the inaugural ball what did she do she came out and sang at last my love has come right well i've always I mean, it's it, there's an interesting synergy between the overall uh relationship of of jay-z and beyonce and obama and michelle and how when they're they're both going through like divorce uh, rumors that around the same time period, I think both men have a bisexual, if not homosexual, tendency. Um, the women actually have similar facial structures, although Beyonce is much prettier, but there are similar facial structures. Um, it, is, it's, it is interesting, I must say. <laughs> and obviously, Jay-Z being one of his biggest proponents, Obama, from the beginning, and in a certain way, laying the foundation for what Obama could achieve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Obama was there to make you mad. Uh, you know, that's why he's been the richest paid uh, president. This was all a game plan to make you well, angry about this. Well, the this. name, the name Barack Obama, you, you've described before. It's uh, the stone cast, what is it about the rock? The rock casteth down from heaven? Uh, no, uh, okay. Um, before we, we jump to that, I just wanted to throw in that uh, uh, Beyonce singing Ava Maria inside of the pyramid with Zahi Was, and he called her a very stupid person. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so uh, the, all those connections are there. When Barack went to Egypt with uh, Zahi, he also found a cartouche of himself and said, look, that looks like me, right? There's Obama saying this on live television when he's looking at, and they said, no, we think you're like King Tut. Which, of course, he looks nothing like King Tut. He looks everything like Akhenaten. Mm -hmm. And I think they were kind of hiding that fact by, by introducing the King Tut factor. Mm -hmm. And Jay-Z, I have suspicions that he might have been uh, Akhenaten's replacement, who was known as Semenkar. Uh -huh. And uh, I have yet to find a good picture of Semenkar to be able to compare the two. But, you know, if all the rest of it be true, then Jay-Z would be Semenkar. Mm -hmm. um, but... Okay, Barack Obama. Yes, let's get to him. Okay, the very words Barack Obama in the Hebrew language means lightning from heaven. Okay, so I was going to get to this esoteric parts of what uh, uh, Barack's play is, his role in this uh, global ritual, as we're saying. Lightning from heaven is the description of Satan in the Bible. If you were to look at the Bible and it said, and Satan fell like lightning from heaven, and you read that in Aramaic, you would read, and Satan fell like Barack Obama. You can look this up in any Hebrew dictionary. I have it there on my website if you want to check it for yourself. Barack Obama means lightning from heaven, which is the description of Satan in the Bible. Now, I've never believed that Barack Obama was meant to be the Antichrist. Although, strangely enough, the, and when Nostradamus predicted the Antichrist, he said he would be connected with Mabus. And it turns out that Barack Obama put Ray Mabus in charge of the Space Force, huh. the United States Space Force, right? Uh -huh. And that all ties into this puzzle. Because when we start to look at what Obama has done, 
and what has been going on in the eight years that he's been around is that we have seen the shutdown of NASA and the rise of the privatized space program and the weaponization of our current space program known as the Ares space program, which of course is the god of war. Mm -hmm. All right, so now our space shuttles are known as the Columbia Endeavor for the discovery of Atlantis, right? And Columbia is their goddess that relates back to, to Isis, and this is why our capital is the District of Columbia, so the Columbia for the discovery of Atlantis. Um, when you start to put these puzzle pieces together, there was a big show going on, and Werner von Braun was one that came forward, and he told his secretary, Carol Rosen, over and over again that there were multi-universes, and that there was a major game plan going on that they were gonna set up to bring about this new world order. And it would start with the Red Scare. And then it would move on to- uh, Terrorism, next. Terrorism, and then asteroids followed by aliens, right? As a, as a the, means the, of, of uh, militarizing space. Yes, the Hegelian dialectic of-, and, of and, that, yeah. and that prospect has been around, at least since Rumsfeld and Bo the Bush administration were pretty heavy advocates of that, of militarization of space. But as you said, the private sector being given more and more reins. I remember talking to Robert Bigelow about this when we did our Jesse Ventura conspiracy theory episode on Skinwalker. And Robert Bigelow is one of these guys who's being given mandate to uh, transport weapons into space as part of his, his private sector um, building of spaceports and whatnot. As we start to look into this puzzle and we start to realize that this was the game plan, I put together an artwork of Barack Akhenaten, Obama as Akhenaten, and I, I put a, a an asteroid hurtling towards Earth and in kind of a pre-show. I, I like to show you what they're gonna do before they do it, right? Mm -hmm. So I put this artwork together and then a month later, or maybe even less, they announced, oh my God, there is an asteroid hurtling towards planet Earth and it will destroy all life in either 2029 or 2036. And this asteroid is known as Apophis. Now, this, this shocked me to death because Apophis is the serpent or Satan deity of Akhenaten's religion. Mm -hmm. Like Titan. So yeah. When this became broadcast all across the news, oh my God, doomsday asteroid Apophis. Now remember, that's Akhenaten's Satan. And it comes from a group of near Earth asteroids known as the Aten, which is Akhenaten's god, right? So uh, we have Apophis coming in while Akhenaten or Obama, Barack Akhenaten is in power and they have to find ways to save planet Earth from this. But the truth of it is the, the odds of it hitting us were slim to none from the get go. And they knew this, it was broadcast as well, but that wasn't gonna make the news and it wasn't gonna push the name Apophis out into the public. You're a great guest to have and very insightful Freeman. Thank you so much for joining us. And people can check you out at uh, FreemanTV.com. Is that the best website for you? That's the only one. That's it. Fantastic. Well, thank you for joining us. And again, we will follow up in the, in the coming months and, uh, and, and, get, and get, you get some new takes on the symbolism that is, uh, that is ongoing and occurring uh, down the road. You can get a lot of this out of our new book called Weird Stuff. Yeah, uh, we have weird stuff. Part one and two are out now and it lays this out for you in a very down to earth manner. It's actually designed in such a way so that you can share this with your friends easily. Everyone will understand what it's saying. We haven't gotten to this part of the puzzle in weird stuff yet. So it's still at the ground floor of understanding so that you can share this information because this is what we find that we need to do the most is create tools for people to share this information. So absolutely. Uh, yeah, so cool. They'll, so, but they can get that through uh, the website, right? Yes, absolutely. FreemanTV.com and also Aliens from Hell, which is this whole talk that we just gave. Well, there you have it, folks. Freeman Fly is a well-researched, very intelligent man who has a lot to offer. So we urge you to go to FreemanTV.com to watch his videos, check out his books, and, and take, a, take an assessment and look for yourselves and see what is occurring because we are at a very critical juncture. And as I said, let this, let this not come forth the peace of the grave, but instead we need true peace, peace on earth being peace of life and awareness and, con and uh, heightened consciousness. So please be the revolution, spread the news, wake your, friend, your friends and fellow humans up to the reality of what is becoming a very bleak and dangerous future.
This is Sean Stone signing off. The Masonic Temple are obligated by their theological idealism to make sure that these and many other Egyptian prophecies are carried out. When these ancient Egyptians were mummified, it was for the purpose of preserving their DNA for, for future cloning. These things may be difficult to believe, but in fact they are true. We are living in an interstellar pyramid scan that these ancient aliens Anunnaki have set into motion over 12,000 years ago. It is a system of converting our planet and solar system into the most valuable commodity in the universe. A planet that has been hollowed out and equipped with underground cities and docking stations on the surface. Our entire civilization has been structured around this massive undertaking of converting Earth's system into a system that can be used to travel throughout the universe and perpetuate whatever race happens to inhabit it. The Anunnaki have used mankind's own diversity to divide and conquer Earth. There's a trillion to one chance that mankind can overcome this extremely complex deception and regain his planet. But by doing so, mankind will have gained the most incredible gift the universe has to offer. Mankind will become an immortal interstellar race and will reap the benefits of his 12,000 year enslavement.